Hi there, it's Tiffany here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this little dreamy scarf, I'm calling it. I made it with um, Red Heart Dreamy Yarn. Not very creative on my, on my title, but it does have this really great finish. It's pretty lightweight, it's just an acrylic, but it has this brushed fill, finish to it, and so it does make it kind of dreamy. I think they named it well. Um, this was sent to us by our friends at Yarnspirations.com. It is, uh, let's see, the color is called Buff. And so it's kind of like this um, nice little pink, kind of, but not too pink of a color. I really like it. It's a good neutral. So I'm going to show you how to work the herringbone half stitch, these half double crochet cluster stitches, followed by a single crochet. And then I'll also show you how I attach these tassels. So let's get going. Just make a sample chain of any even number. I'll probably do, let's say, 14 chains. That'll probably be good enough to get us going, and we'll get started. All right, we are going to start. Did I mention that this was a K size hook? I can't remember. This is a K, my Susan Bates Comfort Grip, 6.5 millimeter. All right, we will start in the third chain from the hook, yarning over, inserting our hook, yarning over, pulling up a loop, and pulling it through one loop, the first loop that you see right there. Yarn over, and then pull through the remaining loops on your hook. All right, here we go, let's do it again. This is the herringbone half stitch. I'm yarning over, Inserting my hook into the next chain space, I'm pulling up a loop, then I'm continuing to pull through that first loop, then I yarn over and pull through all the loops. Now, sometimes when I am teaching my younger girls, who aren't so young anymore, but like when they were teens, I kind of had to have them watch how the hook has to, I really have to twist that hook in order to get the yarn to do that. You don't get to pull quite straight through on that one. So, and also if you're curious, the difference between this stitch and like a half double crochet is right here. I would be yarning over and then pulling through two if I was gonna do a double crochet, but I'm not. I'm continuing to pull that loop through that first stitch. Then I'll yarn over and pull through the last two, okay? So just that one little change kind of makes this stitch have this pretty little loop down closer to the chain. It kind of locks the stitch down, I like to think, and it makes it a little bit more dense of a fabric. So it's not as holy, I guess you would say. Um, you know, the a double, a double crochet stitch kind of stands tall and then it has, um, you know, more air that goes through it, I guess. And this one is pretty dense, I guess you would say. Okay, I'm almost to the end. And for this pattern, and because it's a scarf and I'm not going to be putting a border on it, I'm choosing to just do one single crochet for my turning chain. Not a single crochet, sorry, one chain for my turning chain. I'm going to yarn over and we're going to do half double crochet clusters. And I'm just going to do, you can make these as thick as you, you would like. For me and this yarn, I just did it twice. And then I'll yarn over. There is one, two, three, four, five loops on my hook. Just yarning over like that. So technically in the pattern, I probably, it, you know, half double crochet two together clusters, meaning that they're worked all in the one stitch. And then to kind of make them pop out on one side, I'm going to follow that up with a single crochet. Okay, so yarn over. I'm going to go right into this next stitch. Pull up a loop, kind of stop right there, yarn over again, go right back into the stitch pull up that loop. I've got my five loops on the hook, and then I'm going to pull through all of them. Just like that. Follow it by a single crochet. So you're going to work these all across the row. 
And this is where having an even number of stitches is important because we want the cluster to be able to pop out at the end of your work. And so it needs to end with a single crochet. So think of these as, you know, a little, a little pair. It's a pair of stitches. First, we've got our cluster followed by a single crochet. Okay, I'm gonna make sure you can see this. One more time. Keep your work kind of loose. I know it can get, if it's a little bit too tight, it's hard to pull your yarn through on those clusters. That's a lot of loops to pull through. And if it's super tight, maybe you need a different hook size. Maybe you need to go up one to an L. All right, here we go. It's our last stitch. We're gonna finish it with a single crochet. Now we're gonna chain one and turn. And into that last single crochet we worked, we're going to work our cluster. We're gonna do two rows of clusters. So we'll work that cluster into that single crochet space. And then we'll single crochet into the top of the cluster from the row below. So just the opposite. Here we go, work that cluster. Follow it with a single crochet. And that way you have a double-sided scarf, okay? Because I wanted clusters on each side. All right, work on this all the way to the end of the row. And then we will get our three rows of herringbone stitch going. And I'll show you how to do that. Again, I mean, just in case <laughs> that didn't stick yet. Okay. All right, your last um, single crochet will be in the top of that very first cluster that we worked of that of the cluster row when we started. I'm going to still chain one and turn, and I'm going to work right into that very first stitch. This larger hole almost looks larger. I'm going to go ahead, and now I'll work three rows of the herringbone. Remember how to do it? There we go. Pulling up and pulling through and then pulling through too. Okay, we'll do three rows of these and then the pattern repeats. And then I just did the two rows of the clusters, three rows of the herringbone, and then at the very end of the scarf, when I made it, um, I made my scarf about 78 inches long. And when I, when I measured and I was getting close to that, then I wanted to estimate and end with just one row of the herringbone after I worked two rows of clusters, just so it would kind of repeat and be the same on both sides. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I simply attached those tassels too so let me grab i've got some leftover that i that i cut and i just attached them here on the base chain so what i did is i went ahead and sat down and i cut some lengths of about oh i think i did these like 22 inches you can make them longer if you'd like and then i fold them in half just like that and then what I did was I just took my hook and you don't even have to weave in this, this tail, just pretend it's gonna be one of the fringe. So I took my hook and stuck it into the underside of the chain, went ahead and looped that over the hook, just like that, kind of brought it out a, a little bit, ignore that. And then either you'll get into a rhythm, you can kind of pull it around Pull that through like that, or just do it with your fingers. Okay, let me do it again for you because that little starting chain's in the way. So I went ahead and I just inserted, insert my hook. Here's my yarn. And I do recommend that you pre-cut these so that they're all about the same length. Just pull it through like this. You know, get that loop up 
And all I'm essentially doing, it's probably better, is I'm pulling these two loops through. And this yarn is, um, you know, sticky enough on itself that those are not going to come undone. I mean, if you do make some mistakes, this is a little bit trickier yarn to undo because it, it grabs, it wants to grab itself, I guess is what I'm saying. So, okay, I think that is all. That is a really basic, basic scarf. I hope you enjoy it. It turns out really well for you. I loved how it looked, how it feels. Come and show me a picture. We love sharing your work on our Facebook page. We are Daisy Farm Crafts. If you need any help with any of our patterns, we have formed a Daisy Farm Facebook group. You can ask to join that group and it's just for questions about our patterns and it's another place where you can share your work with other people that are making these same patterns and it's kind of been fun to see and then also it helps me in case I there's a mistake in a pattern or I can explain something more clearly. So anyway, it's kind of fun and it's been great getting to know people more in that group. So come join us over there. We'd love to have you. Okay, you have a great day.